Damn, I'm good. Falcons fans, Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown. And if you're new here, welcome. Wow. <laughs> um, Terry Fontenot just time and time again is proving that all he needs to do is just cook. Uh, Chef Terry is cooking up some amazing things for the Atlanta Falcons. And this draft class is way better than I thought it was going to be. Like, when I was, you know, making this video and I was, of course, looking at our draft picks and trying to think of grades and how I overall feel about these players and blah, blah, blah. I was like, man, like, I actually feel way better about this than I initially did. Uh, spoiler alert, there's not really a player that I disagree with or a position that I disagree with that we drafted. I, I honestly feel pretty good that all of these players should be good fits for Atlanta. Now, you know, of course we have to see how they actually produce on the field. And yes, I know that every draft, there, there's probably gonna be a few players that aren't going to work out, but uh, there's also going to be players that you know are gonna work out. So for the most part, I think that this was an amazing draft for the Falcons and Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So obviously at round one, pick number eight, we get running back Bijan Robinson from Texas. All right, so let's talk about Bijan Robinson um, because over the off season, I'm not gonna say that like I just really did not want Bijan Robinson. I was just kind of like, you know, I personally, this like the last time I'll ever mention this because I mentioned this so many times over the off season. I always said that if these four defensive players are available at pick number eight, Jalen Carter, Tyree Wilson, Christian Gonzalez, or Devin Witherspoon, if one of those four is available at eight, I would pick them over Bijan Robinson. Two of them were available in Christian Gonzalez and uh, Jalen Carter, but the Falcons still go Bijan Robinson. Um, and I am not going to act like suddenly. I never once said that, you know, I, I'm not going to act like, oh, well, actually, uh, I never said that I would go defense in the first round. I always said I wanted Bijan. No, like, I, no, I, I still personally would have gone defense because this defense still needs some help. Um, and yeah, I know, like Jalen Carter with the off-field issues, Christian Gonzalez fell you know, more than he probably should have. Like, yeah, like, whatever. But I, I, I personally still would have gone defense. But that's really the only negatives I saw. I was mostly okay with Bijan if those four defensive players were not available at pick number eight. But I also remember something on the lines of saying that if we took Bijan over one of those defensive players, I wouldn't, like, hate the pick. And that's just kind of how I feel like really nothing changed like I don't really hate the pick I think it's actually to be honest with you a great pick my only criticism is I would have gone defense because we seem to always hit in the first round right like Drake London uh Kyle Pitts Chris Lindstrom Caleb McGarry AJ Terrell Calvin Ridley like we always hit in the first round but it seems to always be offensive superstar talent and I just personally wish we could see if we could hit defensively in the first round besides AJ Terrell, which we did not long ago. But, um, but anyway, um, you know, Bijan Robinson, I feel confident that this is going to work out. Um, you know, he's just the best player available in the draft. Arthur Smith is an amazing run designer. He's going to be behind one of the more silently top 10 offensive lines in the league. Uh, like, you know, no one's really talking about how good this Falcons offensive line could be, but I think it has potential to be a top 10. Easily it could be, like, maybe, like, top three or so run-blocking offensive line, but uh, maybe I'm hyping it up a little too much, but I don't think anyone's really denying, yeah, this offensive line, at far, as far as run-blocking goes, could probably be pretty good. And Bijan Robinson's obviously going to help them, but for pass-blocking... You know, that's, I guess that would just kind of be for a different time. We're talking about Bijan Robinson here. 
But anyway, my point is, like, he's going to be behind one of the better offensive lines in the league. Uh, and, you know, he's obviously just kind of like Kyle Pitts. You don't have to use him for only running back. You can use it for anything. He's just, he's, uh, he's a weapon that's going to help Desmond Ritter develop. And overall, I would give this grade probably an A, only because, it, you know, he kind of landed on the Falcons' lap. Like, it was kind of easy. It's not like they had to, like, trade up and get him. Uh, or anything like I, I think the Falcons were pretty obviously going to take him this whole entire time and not any other team or even if there was another team that was interested in taking him they they were not aggressive enough to go get him before us so um yeah uh this this isn't this is an A grade pretty simple he's just an amazing player um and let's see what he's got welcome to the Atlanta Falcons Bijan at round two pick 44 we get a guard, probably at least, I'm assuming they're going to move him to guard, is Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse. Or Syracuse. Uh, I'm not really sure. Is it Syracuse or Syracuse? Anyway. Um, so, I honestly, this is probably the most like surprising pick I've seen from this draft. Only because I knew the Falcons were going to address the guard situation. But I was definitely shocked with how early they did it. Now, I'm not complaining about the player. I think Matthew Bertrand is an amazing player. Um, they needed physicality, especially for run blocking, especially for run blocking. So they're basically saying, look, our biggest strength probably is running the football. And if that's what's going to get us to the playoffs the quickest in 2023, why not add Bijan Robinson and Matthew Bertrand to improve that offensive line? Uh, Jalen Mayfield, unfortunately, is just not the guy. Um, and yeah, left guard was an issue. So I, I'm actually going to give this, I'll give this an A. I'm not going to give it an A plus yet. Um, only because, you know, I, I just need to see how, if, if he's as good as advertised and, you know, if he actually is going to be this amazing player that we took in the second round, because I thought for sure we were going to go pass rush or corner with our second pick in the draft. Uh, I just, I was thinking like, yeah, for sure we're gonna go defense like we always do. We always go pass rush in the second round with like Arnold Ebiketti and uh, what's his name, Marlon Davidson. But I was just shocked. I was like, oh, we, we get a guard. Um, but I'm not complaining. Like, yeah, again, we needed a guard and I'll get this an A. I, I think it's an amazing pick and it should help make our run game like possibly historically good in 2023. Maybe I'm just getting too excited, but I don't know. I'm just really excited for this pick. And then another pick that I like, round three, pick 75, defensive line, Zach Harrison from Ohio State. Uh, so we do address the pass rush at least a little bit. And yeah, I mean, you know, pretty self-explanatory, right? Like Zach Harrison is maybe not like one of like the best pass rushers available that we could have gotten, but I think he should be a pretty solid pass rusher for us. I'm not expecting too much from him uh, because again, you know, he wasn't like the best pass rusher available for us or anything, but you know, in the third round and you get him, I'm okay with it. Uh, and again, self-explanatory, like we needed a pass rusher um, and, you know, he's going to be right next to amazing talent to work with and grow and develop with Calais Campbell, Grady Jarrett, and Ryan Nielsen to coach him up. So I'm not really going to, you know, criticize it too much because I think it's just a pretty self-explanatory pick. Um, I would give this a B. Um, I would give this a B, to be honest with you, uh, because I just wish we would go pass rusher a little earlier in the draft, but maybe Matthew Bergeron's just going to be incredible and Zach Harrison's overall still a solid pick. I just wish we would have gone pass rush a little earlier than that. But yeah, I'll give it a B. Round four, uh, pick 113, we get Clark Phillips the third, a corner from Utah. Uh, so I'm not going to act like I know like a ton about this guy. But when we got him, Falcons Twitter freaking exploded. I mean, like, they were so happy. Like, everyone was so happy that we got this guy. So, guess I'll just take their word for it that this guy is a stud. Uh, and this is, like, the last pick. It's self-explanatory, right? Like, 
Falcons needed a corner. They got Jeff Akuda, but, eh, you know, like, if it doesn't work out, we can always plug this guy right in. Uh, I'm assuming he's probably going to play slot corner first, though, right? Uh, because of Jeff Akuda stepping in and Casey Hayward is now gone. We don't have Isaiah Oliver. Maybe they want this new guy to step in at nickel. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they do with him. But everyone was super excited when we got this guy, and I'll just take their word for it. So I, I'm only going to give this a B, only because I'm not going to act like I know like a lot, a lot about him. But, uh, but everyone's saying that this is a pretty good pick. So uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take their word for it. Round seven, pick 224, safety to Marco Helms from Alabama. I think that's a pretty good pick. Um, I don't know when he's going to play because I know we got Richie Grant and Jesse Bates. Uh, but I imagine he's going to step in at some point and play pretty well for us. Uh, you know, he comes from Nick Saban. So usually Nick Saban players that come to Atlanta are pretty good fits for us. Uh, like Julio Jones and uh, um, Calvin Ridley and whatnot. Uh, so usually Alabama players work out for us and safety was a need and DeMarco Helms was a pretty good player to pick up. So I'll give this a B plus. I think it's a pretty good pick. Uh, not a whole lot to say there. And then the last pick round seven, pick 225 offensive line, Javon Gwynn from South Carolina. Honestly, I don't know anything about him. So I'm just gonna get this a C because literally, honestly, I'll be real with you, I don't know who that is. Uh, and I can't imagine that a seventh round offensive lineman is probably gonna get a lot of playing time. Uh, but, uh, you know, you never know. We'll, we'll see where it goes, but. The only two players that I didn't like know a lot of was Clark Phillips and Javon Gwynn, or Gwynn. Uh, but every other player, like, you know, I was pretty happy with the pick. And again, like, there, there's not really a player that the Falcons picked up that I just disagree with. And so I'm going to give this draft, I'm going to give it an A. I think it's a fair grade. You know, getting Bijan Robinson and then upgrading the run game even more with Matthew Bergeron. Then you go get a pretty good pass rusher to help Ryan Nielsen and company with Zach Harrison. And you help improve the defense more with Clark Phillips and um, uh, DeMarco Helms. The last offensive lineman I don't know too much about, but yeah, we, we improved the defense and improved our biggest strength on the run game. And overall, it should be a pretty good draft for us, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys with a video this Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Love and appreciate you all for the support, and as always, rise up.